However, and it was the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray, come on down once again. Uh, second game winner of mm. the series. Mm. I mean, not doing it once is cool, Chandler. Doing it twice, and you could see his reaction after this one. He mm -hmm. he was like, wow, that just happened. First of all, it's a damn shame it took us 16 minutes to start talking about the team that won. Classic. But that is the world that we live in. But yeah, <laughs> I love, listen, Jamal Murray, the fact that he has done this now twice, and he was feeling so last night. He punched mm -hmm. on LeBron last night, and he hit him with his own he hit him with his celebrity with the shoulder, the celebration with the <laughs> shoulder shrug. And this is just the dynamic that when you talk about the best duos in the NBA, the fact that Jokic is obviously their everything, he's their best player, but you have a ball dominant guard like that, that you can put the ball in his hands, he can create shots, he's an excellent ISO player. And now down the stretch, having him as that luxury, don't worry about that, Michelle. That's thank me. You. Um, it's unbelievable. Just a clutch, big time shot to do it again, to put out LeBron and the Lakers. This is just an epic, epic shot and great performance. Huge. I just gotta add, first player in NBA history to have back have two game-winning field goals in five seconds wow. of a game in the same series. In one series. That is, and it was mean, questionable to play in this game? Yeah, it's we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Cause you know, when I see questionable now, I Lou had a point anybody. though. I know Lou. Yeah. Lou's ready. No, it, it was just about the game. For me, it was about the supporting cast. Like we're gonna talk about Jamal Murray, we obviously gonna talk about Jokic, but Give Porter Jr. credit. Poured in 26 points. Stop. Made mm -hmm. very timely, timely baskets when they needed him. Got some big stops as well. And I thought that was the Achilles heel for the Lakers this whole year. Didn't get very much out of their bench. I understand Gabe Vincent was dealing with some injury stuff, trying to find his rhythm. Spencer Dinwiddie coming over halfway through the season. But them guys could have played better, could have gave them more. But um, Denver got everything they could out of their supporting cast. It's <laughs> We got matcha. Everywhere. Yeah, that's how. Like, I, it's, we're trying to be professional, we but we got, got a, a bloody mess back down here. Below. <laughs> Something bad happened. Look, here's the thing, because you know, in that second game, the the first game winner, I should say, the second game, um, he didn't have the best game, but then he had that moment. So it's kind of crazy when we talk about Jamal Murray. This time he had 32 minutes or 32 points in 41 minutes. I mean, hasn't made an all-star team. We've talked about this numerous times. We, we're always trying to figure out who's the next most underrated player, and this argument seems pretty logical for him. Yeah, it's him. And we talk about Sabonis early on, and then Jamal Murray, he's that guy. He is the most underrated player. He's probably the best player to never not make an all-star game. It's because of this. It's insane. A, how, he's a, yeah, he's a champion. Like, It'll how, change, guys. What else does he have to do for us to start respecting him and giving us this credit? And even us, we, I think when we talked about the best duos in the oh, NBA yeah. or the beginning of the season, we're talking about like KD and Buck swept. We're talking uh, about LeBron and uh, you swept. were I always I had these I guys. I, Get listen, him, Lou. it's hard Get not him. to put them at the at the very top. They're the champs. They've been one of the most dominant. Them in Boston have been the most the best teams all year long that we trust the most. So, and when you have a player like Jokic that everything goes through, but at the end of the game you don't have to go through him. You can have this guy handle the ball and play that two man game and pick and roll. It's such a luxury. But even the shot that he just got off. Jokic in a pick and roll, you got to respect that you can't help. He's coming off naked one on one. 100%. It's such a lovely luxury to have, Shams. But yeah, they mentioned it. The fact that he was quote unquote questionable before this one. Not only what, did he not look questionable, then he does what he does. What, what was the decision making process? Like? Him and Mike Malone had a pretty, I, I think, emotional conversation before the game because you think about it with a calf strain, and, and I, clearly it wasn't uh, significant enough like Giannis's is. To, to sit him, you know, and, and Giannis literally could just started running after two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> it wasn't that for Jamal Murray, but it was a conversation of, is it worth the risk? Even if it's slightly, you could pull it again, <clears throat> could worsen it. But he plays, and Michelle, to me, he's one of the best clutch players in recent playoff memory. I mean, you think about, I was there in the 2020 bubble. That's when, to me, Jamal Murray first showed up as, as a potential star player in this league, and, and he had a lot of big time moments. Last year in the, in the, you know, in the run to the championship, you could say that Nikola Jokic is their best player, but Jamal Murray is their closer in a lot of ways. Nikola Jokic, we know he can score and he can rebound and all that, but Jamal Murray, you need a shot, you're going to him, and two game winners in one series, it's kind of first amazing. player to ever do that, it's very, very you impressive. Can all, you can have that. Giannis can be the Bucks' best player, but Dame's a closer. Shaq was the best, Absolutely. Kobe's a closer. You, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be that person at the end of the game, you know what I mean? That's what makes this team so Jalen cool. Williams, half, half the time, is OKC's closer. SGA's their best player. Like, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that guy down the stretch, and Jamal Murray is their guy down the stretch. You know where I thought the Lakers made a mistake yesterday? I thought they played into him being injured too much. Really? To, yeah, to start that game, if you if you go back and look, to start that game in the first quarter, maybe halfway through the second, they were allowing him to shoot. 
He was hobbled a little bit. He was limping around. He was getting wide open looks, and that gave him an opportunity to afford his adrenaline to kick in, for that not to be a, a factor. Now he's in a rhythm. You allowed a guy to get wide open shots. Now fourth quarter, you got to deal with him. I think the Lakers were too much worried about him being injured instead of putting pressure on him. They were just allowing him to shoot. It's like he Kaiser soze them. It just <laughs> yeah. lulled them into this Wade situation. But then... Questionable turns into the slam dunk on LeBron. I, again, like questionable mm. is a very interesting word. In the Don't hit sport. him with his own shoulder shrug right here. Too. Nasty. Ah. Yeah. Nasty. Get him. Yeah. That's fun. He'll have that poster on his wall forever. Forever Ooh. and ever and ever. Yeah, that's, that's what, nasty. What, what? LeBron yeah. just did <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but LeBron just did that shoulder shrug to play before this, too. So I love, again, the pettiness. Quick turnaround. Yeah. I like when you can do it right away. Yeah, live in the moment. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so the 4-1 series win, uh, by the way, th this, they made a lot of this last night, and they should have, because the Lakers had a lead in all of these games, basically. And 20 the, minutes the one in, is we're the only still on the Lakers. Yeah, we're Gotta still doing it. it. But that being said, there never seems to be any worry. If you're watching them, you're like, they'll figure it out. Jokic is the best player on the team, but his supporting cast, where would you put them? What's up there is that we talk about their starting five. Their bench has their holes, but their starting five is elite. And the way that they fit with the, the two-headed monster of Murray and Jokic, how they play pick and roll, how they play a two-man game, but then they space the floor with one of the best perimeter shooters and Michael Porter Jr., who's been hmm. absolutely flamed Crazy. this series. He set a franchise record this year. And then Aaron Gordon, he gives that luxury where he can guard the best big. He can go ver he can go that versatile small ball lineup where they just fit. And again, their bench we thought would be an issue, but they just go, they only go six, seven, maybe eight some nights deep. Their starting five is so elite, and they all know their roles. KCP's knocking down shots. He plays defense. So when you have a guy on a team like this that they're bought in, they don't care about anything other than winning. They know Jokic is the guy. He's going to get MVP. He's going to get all the talk about. Murray is the next in line. And then these other guys just play their role, and they play it perfectly. And they're just a really, really good fit basketball-wise. Aaron Gordon wasn't like this in Orlando. It's kind like, of, it's, oh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's the, 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 this is a way better fit for him. He found his place. That means everything. We're